Hi everyone and welcome to Astor's Place. Finally, 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 I am in sync with you girls in the Northern Hemisphere. I've had lots and lots of requests about hanging garden baskets and looking how to arrange using spring bulbs and bedding plants for window boxes, etc, etc. Well, it was great. I went to the garden centre the other day and all of the bulbs are in stock now so that it means it's time for planting them at my place. And isn't it just, oh, just bizarre that here we are in the middle of our summer and it's about 28 or 29 degrees and the humidity is about 100 and you girls on the Northern Hemisphere are freezing in terrible weather. But this is for you girls on the other side and I'm going to see if I can cheat it. What I usually do is when I get my bulbs, I put them into the freezer and leave them there for about a month and then bring them out and plant them. And that sort of like shocks them into growing. So I've got some lovely blue bells, I've got some freesias, two, uh, two, and some little, uh, what are they, little wee, oh yes I love those, little irises. Plus I've got some hyacinths here, I'm going to leave those for another day because I've got some really great ways of how to grow those in water and, via, and vases. Now if you can't get any bulbs, which is invariably what happens at my place, if you go back through designing with spring flowers, you'll find these that I did, there was a couple that I did, but I also keep the seeds keep all the little bulbs and what I do is just they I buy them here in little little um, bottles like this I leave them there it's too hot here in Auckland to plant them into the ground because they just rot out so leave them in their little bottles and it's just a matter of emptying those and just separating all that there away and from what you'll find is the bulbs will actually do this really clever thing they will actually produce little bulbs you this the main bulb has rotted that's because of what the conditions are like here but in fact the whole thing has that's why um, I like to just gather my own take these and let them dry off myself and gather them because if I leave those they're just going to continue to rot like that from the inside of an onion out so just go into here, just pick out all those little wee baby bits that come off and that bit there looks like it's null and void. No, there's one more wee bit in there. So just take those and put those to one side. It's just such a shame when things like this happen. But usually the bulb should multiply but it just depends on where you are. See there's one I've saved. So all the, I'd say that the plant has actually got into here and taken all its nutrients out and that we've been left with something that's almost, now that there, I wouldn't even use it. See how that's all gone like that? It should look like that. So if it looks like that, best to separate them now. Once you've done that, what I do is, I get a bag, you, even the bags, the string bags that you get for putting the onions in, if you can find those anywhere, they work really well. Just get these, or even those fishnet pad here are great. Put those into there, mark the outside what it is, and just leave those in a very, really cool place until you're ready to use them. So I hope my little advice on how to look after your spring bulbs has been of interest to you. And I'm now going to uh, have a wee break. When I come back, I'll show you what to do with them. Welcome back. Right, here is a great way of producing a window box that will go for months and months and months. The first thing you do is to get your your trough or whatever you want to use, I've put some drainage, uh, some soil down the, not soil, some stones down the bottom for drainage and now what I'm going to, and then I put a little bit of soil into there and now I'm going to plant my bulbs, I'm going to plant them quite deeply and I'm going to plant them with these are the ones that I've just done and you'll notice that they haven't got any little hairy fibery bits on them. If you're faced with that, just leave them alone because they're not dry enough. So what I'll do is I'll use these and I'll show you, for instance, what I'm talking about. Getting rid of these. See how they've got those little bits? That, this here, has it's, it's still a bit damp and that needs to be dried off, but this here, has ju it's just at the right consistency for what we want it to do, so it has to be very dry. Right, put that into there and I've got room for two, maybe three of those, put that down into there like that. Then get another, a little bit more soil and I just put this in with my hand, put the soil in there like that and it needs to be quite well covered. Now I don't know whether you can get the bedding plants or potted colour at near your place but just go to, if you can't find it, usually just, I just get mine from like the garden centre, sometimes even the supermarkets have them. Right, I'm going to put that into there now and this is almost 
getting to be past its use by date in this little pot. But this potted colour is fantastic. This is going to really thrive because I've taken it out of there. When it looks like that, just see that, I just threw that into the garden. It looks a bit rough. Just get in there and just tease those little roots out. And I'm going to put that into there. And then do the soil as you go. And a little wee container like this is just perfect for what I want to do. Just backfill in there. Like so, and then make sure that that's well wedged into there. Then I'll use this here. This is quite nice. Look at that. And what the great thing about these, and if you want to get these to last a bit longer, just go into there and see all those little bits there that are all the dead bits. Take all those little dead heads off there, and uh, is that attached? That could be a new one coming, so we'll just leave that alone. Now that's an old one, and you know that they're old because they'll just fall off easily into here, gently tip that up like that, and then that can go into there. And you know that you're not hitting the roots, the little bogs, because they are ages away. And I put a bit more soil into there, and without boring you, I'll just get on with this and I'll be back in a minute. Right, now I'm going to put the alyssum in. This stuff's great, it's got a beautiful smell and it lasts and lasts and lasts for ages and ages. And that will just, I'm putting that there so that that will just spread down the sides. Now I've got this really great tip on how to, I'll just get rid of all that muck there, on how to make these last longer. So you've got to water them anyway, but the other thing that I like to do is to use this great stuff here. Don't let those bulbs get wet because I've got lots of planting to do. I like to use sphagnum, wet sphagnum moss on the top of all of my flower boxes. This helps to retain the moisture. It also, um, is a nice way of covering up that soil if you're going to have this near a windowsill or like a front entrance way so that you don't see that. But as I said, it keeps all of the moisture in there and it is fantastic. There you go, look at that. How cool is that? A window box that's gonna go on and on for ages and ages. As these die off, just remove those and replant. Make sure that you clip all the wee dead heads off it and it will just flower and flower and flower for ages. And um, soon the bulb will come up and it's going to look fantastic and once the whole thing dies down just remove all of your plants get rid of all of that soil to get new soil and keep it in a damp place for next season and the bulbs will come up again hope you enjoy that and i'll see you again